Welcome everyone to Gamer Meld. Today we have potentially new Nvidia graphics cards, a Ryzen 3000 benchmark, and a new Intel exploit that isn't looking good. But first, check out today's sponsor, Drop. Formerly known as MassDrop, a group buy website with amazing deals on PC hardware. It's free to sign up, so what are you waiting for? Start saving now by visiting the link in the description below. Okay. It's news time, and first up for today, it looks like we could be getting new NVIDIA graphics cards sooner than many expected. Originally reported by Red Gaming Tech, whose sources told them that NVIDIA is working on a refresh of their RTX GPUs with slightly faster 16 gigabit per second memory instead of their current 14 gigabit GDDR6 to compete with AMD's upcoming Navi graphics cards. Unfortunately, that's all they were given, but if this is true, it should mean one of two things. First, that NVIDIA would actually be releasing full-on new models with an updated name. Maybe 2170, 2180, I don't know. But if that's the case, they'd likely include more cores, faster clocks, etc. The second option is the much more likely scenario, where they basically do what we saw with a few Pascal GPUs before. Meaning, they quietly release updated versions of the same GPUs with only faster RAM, but at the same price. And this isn't necessarily a bad thing, because the older models got price cuts last time, and anything that brings down the price of Nvidia's cards is a positive in my book. Next up for today, we have a new benchmark that's likely from the Ryzen 3000 series. And while it's the same chip we saw from a little while back, there's a couple new pieces of information. For one, there's a new motherboard, meaning this really is likely a Ryzen 3000 series chip. Second, while the turbo is lower than the base clock and therefore lower than the first benchmark, quad and all core scores are even better. Still, while this doesn't tell us much, since it's very much an early engineering sample, it at least further proves that AMD is up in their core count with at least 12 cores and likely the 16 cores that Tom Apisac tweeted on before. Lastly for today, Intel has yet another series of side channel exploits that seem to have been a part of their microarchitecture for over a decade. The vulnerabilities were supposedly first found by Intel and later other research groups, and there's a series of four that together are called MDS or Microarchitectural Data Sampling. As for what it does, MDS is similar to last year's exploits in that they use a security flaw in Intel's chips when they execute a task based on predicting what the user is going to do. Unlike Meltdown Inspector, MDS tricks the CPU into grabbing data from the chip's frame buffer and then retrieving it from the cache. To take advantage of it, attackers only need to run a code on the target chip via a few ways, from an application or even just running JavaScript on your browser. To make matters even worse, no one seems to agree on how bad this is. Intel claims it isn't a big issue because there's a ton of noise associated with the data, making it difficult to sift through. But a couple researchers argued they could reliably find valuable information. Not only that, but the researchers disagreed with Intel on mitigation, claiming that until fixes are made, users should disable their simultaneous multi-threading, or hyper-threading as Intel calls it, to make it more difficult on attackers. For those who don't know, that would result in massive performance losses, and Intel definitely doesn't want that. As far as software mitigation, Intel is working with tons of major companies on operating system updates, microcode updates, and more. When it comes to affected CPUs, it seems AMD's chips aren't, though the company is working on it and have at least named two of the four MDT exploits that definitely aren't affected. When it comes to Intel's chips, it seems all but select 8th and 9th gen chips are affected, with Wired stating that only chips made in the last month have hardware mitigation. Luckily, the researchers have published a tool that I'll have linked in the description where you can go and test if your particular CPU is susceptible. So while that does it for today, I know that last bit was a good bit of information, but I think it's important to know what's going on. Basically, just make sure to keep your computers up to date, as well as subscribe for any updates moving forward. And as always, have a great day.